Psalm 1 uh, and, uh, and, and verse uh, 1 here, it says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the ways of sinners or sit in the seat of mockers. Now hold that. That's one of the ways that you get identified as the blessed. Blessed is the man who does not walk with those other folks. You get identified as a person who's blessed by who you walk with. But his delight is in the law of the Lord or in the word of God. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in, on his law he meditates day and night. Day and night he's meditating on the word. How many of you hear that? He is like a tree planted by streams of water. It's on the board there. Which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. And whatever he does prospers. Why aren't we prospering as it says in the psalm and everything he does will prosper? Why aren't we prospering? You know, it was just funny. A minute ago I asked you how many of you uh, wanted to bring somebody to the church, and a few hands went up. And that is indicative of many times of why God's people are not prospering because they're not obeying God's word. And they're not looking for the opportunities of God to be useful for God, for his kingdom. Because they have God and other things. How many of you know he has to become Lord of your life? And if he's not Lord of your life, you'll make everything else king of your life. Ephesians 1, 3 and 9, just as God chose the saints in Christ Jesus, or in Christ, before the foundations of the world. Now, for those of you that don't understand the Bible very well, or those of you that might not think that what I'm telling you is a factual thing, then I'm letting Paul, as he wrote Ephesians, I'm letting him tell you. He says, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before, say it with me, before the foundations of the world. How many of you know he chose you before the foundations of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. So saints, listen to me. You were on the corner of nowhere with the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and the Son being the Word, you were in him before the foundations of the world. So when God decided and he wanted to make man, he had in his hand seeds and he coated every one of the seeds and the seed has your code in it. And when that code comes up, it's time for you to live for the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us that we are highly favored. You remember uh, Mary comes? The Bible says she was referred to as highly favored. The Lord, the angel of the Lord said, Mary, you are highly favored of the Lord. Isn't that true? Why was she being highly favored? Because a seed had come in her. Isn't that right? How many of you say, Lord, thank you that you've highly favored me? You see, highly favored people are blessed. Now, there are four reasons that I put down. There's probably 400, but there's four reasons of stunted growth. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 11 and it says, of whom uh, we have much to say and how hard to explain since we have become dull uh, of hearing. How many of you hear that? One of the reasons, one of the reasons that God's people are not, uh, not apprehending the thing they've been apprehended for is we've become dull of hearing. How many of you know the world's music and the world's dialogue is making God's people dull of hearing? Here's the second one. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. It says that we should not have to come back to the elementary principles of Christ. How many of you know one of the reasons that we don't prosper, we're stunted in our growth, is because we're dull of hearing and we refuse to grow up. Next thing is 1 Corinthians chapter 3. This is one of those 
stunted moments. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I want you to get this one. reason you're not growing sometimes is dull. Sometimes because you won't grow up. And then number 3 is probably the most powerful. Chapter 3 verse 1. And brethren, and I brethren could not speak to you as the spiritual people, but as the carnal, as the babes of Christ. Have you heard that? Now, here's what I want you to see. The reason they were babes is one reason. The other reason is they're carnal. How do you know the carnal mind cannot perceive the things of God? Isn't that what it says? The carnal man cannot perceive the things of the Spirit of God. Carnal man. What is a carnal man? The carnal man is the man that's always consumed with this world's stuff. Whether it's your work, whether it's your hobby, whether it's your whatever, you're always on the topic of the carnal things to satisfy the soul. And then the fourth one is, 1 Corinthians 3, it's right there again. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able, for you are still carnal. For where there is envy and strife and divisions among you, are you not carnal, behaving like mere men? That's pretty insulting. For when one says, I'm Paul, and the other says, I'm Apollos, are you not carnal? And, and, and look, saints, one of the things that it, it is a hang-up is carnal things have more to do with philosophy, but material things have to do with possessions. So you can be dull of hearing. You can be babies, and you can be carnal, and you can be so consumed with consumer that you can't find God. Placement is everything. The power of anointing is in the power of alignment. The power of the anointing is in the power of alignment. How many of you hear that today? The power of anointing is in the alignment. How many of you want to get aligned with God? If you're not in an alignment, you know people that have back problems, you know their back gets out of alignment, and they have a hard time, don't they? They can't walk right. They have bulging uh, disc and things. It's because their body gets out of alignment. You see, when you're out of alignment with God's intention for your life, then there's no flow through your life. How many of you hear that? How many of you want to get things straightened up so you can get in alignment? So the blessing can come. Psalm 133, verse 1 through 3. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for uh, brethren to dwell together in unity. Unity talks about that whole thing, about alignment. Say, Lord, thank you for an alignment. I thank you for this alignment today, that you're aligning us. Amen? Now, the early church in, in Jerusalem knew this alignment. Proper alignment is how we operate in proper anointings. Proper Alignment is what causes us to have a mind change toward prospering. I just was speaking to you a minute ago. You got to change your mind. The early church in Jerusalem had great power because they had something that we have to have for this alignment. They had relationship. Acts chapter 4, verse 32. Now, the multitude of those who believed, first of all, what did they do? Say it out loud. What did they do? See, you got to believe. If you're not, you don't believe that God is, then you won't believe that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you've got to believe that he is. So the multitude of those who believed were of one heart, that's the first thing, one soul, neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. Okay, next verse, guys. And, and, and if you look at this, if, if you really grasp this. Look at verse 33. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them. What was the word? Have you know that that unity, that getting in alignment brought a blessing on everybody? Have you hear that? How many of you know that the blessing that we want to see in the church is the same blessing on all that's in the church? How do you hear that? God wants to bless you. He wants to bless your business. He wants to bless your work, or he wants to bless your skills of your hand. He wants to bless your home. He wants to bless your children. He wants to bless us, but he wants to bless us. How do you hear that? 
And one of the things is they gave great witness. When the Bible speaks of one accord, one heart, one mind, one soul, one place, and singleness of heart, it's describing proper relationships. I thank God for his goodness. Lord, thank you for that one whose hand I hold on the right and on the left. Thank you, Lord. You're bringing people together. One accord. One mind. One soul. Ha. Oh, I laugh in the face of the devil. The devil says that black people and white people can't get together. Brown people and yellow people and black people and white people can't get together. What a lie! With our God! We're of an incorruptible seed! 